<clears throat> okay. So while uh, the topic of the course is called introduction to B theory, we have some kind of journey, journey to B theory. We discuss some subjects. However, the subjects have some branches. And maybe some of this branch would be even more interesting than the B theory itself. And uh, nobody knows. So <clears throat> today we will go towards one of these branches. Okay? It is not directly needed, maybe, to understand B theory, but uh, I consider it very important and interesting. <clears throat> One second. So, the topic of today's seminar would be higher Gromov Witten theory and relation to Nikrasov theory. The second topic that I'd like to discuss would be higher Gromov Witten theory on toric manifolds. And okay, AIB approach and I think I'll have to call it Hoft strings. So how these Hof strings are related to some other strings, I don't quite know. So it's a place where one can discuss something. So let me start with a brief introduction. That should be a point zero here. I'll eliminate higher. So gromov witten theory and AIB. I will give a brief outline. So, Gromov Witten theory is an instantonic theory of holomorphical maps to what? To almost complex target. Now I'd like to stress this almost, because the main equation may be interpreted as a, as a map, as an equation 
such that we have target x, we have world fit sigma, we have a map phi. So we have a tangent map. And uh, here we have almost complex structure. So here we have T one zero. So uh, Andre, uh, yes, a, a very na naive question. So the world for us is divided between two letters A and B, and gromov uh theory is, is A. So it's supposed to be in A, but on the other hand, the equation del bar x equals zero. On which side, to which letter does, does it correspond? To A or to B? It's A. It's A. A. But, the, uh -huh. but isn't the round the, the, the kind of the, um, isn't, isn't the full theorem governing the letter A? Uh, so here is uh, a confusion point. Mm -hmm. So the main confusing thing is that while cohomology, while uh, cohomology that we are interested in are the RAM, mm -hmm. the equation that we are using to relate this cohomology is holomorphic. Ah, because that's, that's the gauge fixed equation. Yes, so uh, for physicists, you may say it's, it's the gauge fixing condition. Mm -hmm. So let me describe this gauge fixing condition in a geometric way. So we have X, we have tangent space. Mm -hmm. So we have a tangent map, okay? We have sigma. It also has a tangent space. And here we take T zero one to sigma to X. And then of course differential maps this here. So equation on the map is the following. It's that if you apply this to T01, to sigma, you will not get into T one zero, okay? And if you take projection to T one zero of X, it will be zero, okay? You take this, go here, you get zero. So, when I am trying to write it down in this way, I somehow assume that there are holomorphic coordinates X. X. But uh, this is true only if X has a co integrable complex structure. I am re rewriting it in this way to stress that in this equation, we do not need integrability. Okay. You may ask why I am doing this, why this is important. I'd like to say that it's important because it would be important in the higher dimensional generalizations. And that's a point that was missed by uh, people. 
So here I am stressing on something that is important. There is another question. <coughs> People may say that uh, Grom of Wheaton came from uh, supersymmetric uh, sigma models. And the supersymmetric sigma models, we know that the target should be not only complex, but also equipped with a Keller metric. Here I would like to say that I am not considering this a model as a twist of supersymmetric model. It is just an instantonic theory. Theory of localization to holomorphic maps. Okay, so after this, Well, the, the original description of uh, a model was in terms of simple symplectic targets, so it's it was not assumed that it's Keller or anything. It depends on uh, yes. So the very old in the Floyer theory, it was symplectic. So when people say a model, they uh, studied n equals two two twisted a super conformal. Okay, but it's a history. So we so need symplectic. We context. need symplectic and almost complex without any compatibility between them, or no, with compatibility but without integrability. Of, yeah, of. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there were options, but so it's one thing, and uh, here there would be a question. If it's possible to generalize from sigma to S, so sigma has complex dimension one, and this has complex dimension two. So why not? Why not to study the equation in the following way? So the simplest equation in uh, complex dimension one was how many lines go through two points, okay, in a plane. So this, may be generalized to the question, how many planes go through for three points and higher generalization. So here, one thought, one can get a lot of structure and solve a lot of enumerative problems. However, people never did this. And the origin was expressed by Gromf. Gromf argument. This equation as equation for phi has virtual dimension minus infinity. So he argued that if we take complex structure here or here in general position or non-integrable, the index shows that uh, we have no maps. That's why 
we should not study this equation at all. And people believe in this argument for some time. So if Gromov, who is an expert, says, we should follow. However, people still know that there are equations. There are holomorphic maps. So what are there? Some curiosities, you see, it would look strange. <clears throat> so let us try to understand uh, the Gromov argument uh, in the, what I'll try to call physical way of thinking. Let us embed phi into smooth maps. from S to X. Assume that complex structure on X is integral. Then we have a system of equations. So now I'll erase this. DZ one bar of X equals to zero. So what is X here? We have a target, we have coordinates, X size that are functions of the target. And what people call physical field X is the following. X of ZZ bar I is the pullback of the coordinate XI. So that's what I mean here by XI. So people say that for one field, we have two equations. And uh, they may be incompatible. So too many equations. So the intelligent way to write it is the following. Let us put here D bar and let us consider universal equation. So these equations are parameterized by PI. That is roughly speaking, the two one form on S. Okay, with values in the pullback of cotangent bundle. To this. Holomorphic cotangent bundle. So to say that we have too many equations, we can say that the space of P's is too big. The number of fields here is twice as many as fields here. Okay, because uh, th these differential fields have two indices. Okay. Sorry, what, what, do you, what do you mean by universal equation? It means that for each uh, 
for each uh, form p, I can consider this as an equation. So I don't see equation. So I, I presume this is a term in the act. Equation means that this equals to zero. This is an equation. Uh, so integral. Okay. Integral, yes. So you see here is an integral. So it's more intelligent way to write it this way than to say that for any point P belonging to S. So this P is not that P. Here we see infinitely many equations. In the functional analysis, it's much better to write it this way. However, what saves the day is the observation that these equations are linearly, linearly dependent. If complex structure on S is integrable, then these equations uh, are dependent. Actually, PI can go to D bar epsilon. In this case, equations would change to d bar epsilon, d bar x i. This identically equals to zero if d square equals to zero. And this is exactly the integrability of almost complex structure on S. Mm. So that's the way how to overcome Gronov's argument. It means that when we start to write down, okay, I need to take a cat out of, of the picture. Well, in fact, we didn't see it until you took it out. If what? We didn't see it until you moved it. We didn't know that there was a cat. So you okay, so the picture by first bringing it into the picture. Okay. Okay. So. So this is the hint, and uh, it would mean that when we will try to write down a delta function on holomorphic maps, we will have the gauge theory. So now the complex structure on, on the source is integrable and on the target is still almost. No, it's integrable. No, so he, no, he, 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 here you don't see it. Here you see it only from the fact that I have coordinates. 
So I, I can, I, I am not going to go into detail, but you may check that, uh, that another compatibi compatibility here is the ability to write it down this way. Mm -hmm. So if, so, It's, it's, it's a hard, it's, it would be harder to, to show it, but there is an exercise. I'll write down holomorphicity in terms of almost complex structure on target. So instead of d bar x i, I will have more complicated expression here. Okay. It would be something like xm, and this, this would be real coordinates. I will need to take this derivative and I'll have to take something like projection to the target, like g minus i, g on the target. I, I forgot, there's this word, the j holomorphic maps. Isn't it exactly this? What? j holomorphic maps. Isn't it exactly what we want here? Mm -hmm. the, the dimension would be wrong. So, uh, so well, let me make the statement that if I write things in the following way, let me put here this projection, GMN minus I. So this is projection. Delta M N N. So you, you probably want plus I just just to be consistent. Okay, plus I. Okay. So if I write it this way, I would be able to keep the, uh, this symmetry only if J would be integrable. L let me leave it as an exercise. I I have done it once. I don't want to repeat it. You can do it if you wish. So, so in this, under this condition, we have this, I would call it curved gauge theory. So we used uh, to have gauge theory having a connection here. But here we have a curved theory with the gauge symmetry on Lagrange multiplier. And before I go further, I would like to show you that we already encountered this option. We have already seen it, but in a different context. We have seen it before. When we were trying to write down the following equation, d phi equals to zero on surface sigma. This is a two dimensional theory. We want to have a constant maps. Not holomorphic, but constant. Sorry, can can I go back to previous uh, point? Uh, yes. So instead of separately imposing uh, integrability on 
sigma and x it seems like we have just one condition so maybe it can be like relaxed maybe it doesn't have to be exactly integrable x or you so you... from my understanding from my understanding it could not be relaxed mm -hmm. so i so let me propose something i'll show you uh, this model simpler model and from this simpler model, you would mostly be convinced that it is hard to relax this condition. Okay? Okay. So we want holomorphicity. Then as a toy model, we study constant maps. And of course we know what the theory is. It is this theory, theory with this action. And of course we know this theory. This is nothing but the 2D young mills with zero coupling constant. And the billion group. In order to see it, we just need to realize that we used to this equation when P, when we wrote P as A. And here A was a connection. And relations between equations that I mentioned here become just gauge transformation. Okay, so it is a toy model. I prefer to write it this way. You can put A if you wish. Now, let me deform this model a bit. Let me replace equation d phi equal to zero by the following equations. Sorry. Here, V1 and V2 would be vector fields. So equations would look like uh, are we considering uh, 2 dBF right now or back to 4D theory? What, what are we looking at? We are doing we are doing two-dimensional theory. Oh, okay. As a toy model. Mm -hmm. So before we do four-dimensional theory, we try to understand the two-dimensional theory as a toy model, because it's better to start with toys and then to go to the actual 
stuff. Uh, what, what happened to the targets? So what are these T1 and T2? So, so in this toy model, world shift is sigma mm -hmm. target is some manifold x with two vector fields and what yes is so in this toy model so before it was just manifold x now it's a vector now we have two vector fields so and it's what, toys yes mm -hmm. so what t1 t2 are they just coordinates on the surface yes Mm -hmm. We may consider the surface just as a uh, plane or uh, or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I missed where, where these vector fields came from. Just a piece the of the Ah, you deform. Okay. Because I want to see kind of phenomena and. Uh, here, I again have similar phenomena. I have too many equations, one field and twice many equations. And as you know, if two vector fields are in general position, this is an incompatible system. It has no solutions for general V one A V two A. I'm sorry. What is this phi? Is it some function on sigma with the values in Lie algebra or, or, as well? What is it? Oh, so so what is this phi? Phi is the coordinate. Here, phi is the coordinate on X. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's a model example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is incompatible. However, when vector fields commute, it is a compatible system. So how could this be? That I can treat simultaneously compatible and incompatible systems. The proper way to do, do it is to write down the action Now I say that dt1 I will call omega 1 dt2 I will call omega 2 Omega I P A V A of I. So oh, I'll study this this section. And then I would like to ask when this section could be a question when such action has gauge symmetry. So when uh, vector fields V commute, it should have gauge symmetry. Where vector fields do not commute, it should not. And the answer is given by BV formula.
you write this action in the BV formalism, consider this omega as external fields. And you may check that SS equals to zero exactly. Well, V1, V2 commute. And you may even write down the how gauge transformations are modified in the in the presence of this vector field. Actually, the gauge transformation for P is of course a variation of S with respect to phi. And uh, It contains something interesting here. <coughs> so there is variation of pi is d pi, but this is the gauge uh, transformation that we knew from the very beginning. However, we here we have something else. Here we have this. Sorry, did you want to have epsilon on the right instead of here? Here, no, I don't want to have epsilon. I, I mean, would, gauge, I would in the gauge transformation. So here I'm writing the gauge transformation. The gauge transformation in BV formalism is this. Okay. So, uh, oh, okay, okay. So, so it is a hint how to get it. Or you can study how to modify gauge transformation such that this new action will still have a gauge transformation. You will need, you will need to guess something. The answer is this, and these gauge transformation are consistent only if this. Is valid. And people who know BV could read it right now, immediately. So this is a game with vector fields. Once again, it is a toy model, all right? So we are doing toy models in order to apply it to real problems. So coming back to real problems. Oh, so, so, so uh, I had some problem with uh, form degrees. So that there was, if, if delta P is something that contains DP and what happens with form degrees? P has zero component plus one component. Ah, okay. okay. So this is ghost. Okay. So they're, so they're already, already super fields, I see. Yes, of course. So you see, I assume that you know something about BV and uh, you'll be able to read it out from BV. Okay. okay. Because uh, you see in front of you, it will be stupid for me to pretend that you do not know BV, okay? And that's why uh, I could uh, say, let us guess this transformation, this way and that way, you will say that I'm stupid. You know BV, so I write in terms of BV. Also, in terms of BV, you may even do the following. Consider not D here, but some differential Q, whatever. All 
plus I am rewriting the same thing. Now I decided to do it again. Okay. And you may ask, when does this thing solves BV? So of course Q square should equal to zero. Q omega should equal to zero. And also V V should be zero. So now, if Q is D bar, it resembles uh, a complex maps. Okay, it's condition Q square equal to zero. By the way, you can also study these equations. It's also possible. Still, let me come back to original problem. I have equations of x m, okay, equals to something, complex structure, something. So equation of helmorphicity, sorry. Equations of helmorphicity. I rewrite d over dz1 bar as d over d t1 plus i d over d sigma1. Okay. I'm trying to understand what was the moral of the toy model. What's the message? The, the, the moral of the, the moral of the toy model was that vector fields should commute. Oh. That if vector fields commute, we can prolong the gauge transformation. If vector fields do not commute, we cannot. Yeah, but so we started by observation that equations were in, in compat incompatible. In general, in general position, but if if under special assumptions, the, this gives a gauge theory satisfying the classical master equation. Exactly. Sure. So, but but so okay. I, I was expecting that you um, that you would say something like if vector fields do not commute, then what happens? If vector fields do not commute, I just do not know how to treat this theory. So it's my personal failure. Okay. Maybe you will help, but uh, I don't know how to modify this theory if vector fields do not commute. But uh, the whatever the virtual dimension of the model a space of solutions is something objective. It's not uh, uh, Andre Vosev's personal failure. So of course, right? so, so there are I, either there are uh, of course. But uh, so if you do not have gauge symmetry, if you do not have gauge symmetry, you could not you could not put this uh, degeneracy in, in, in as a gauge condition. So, Indeed. so, so gauge transformations are in duality with uh, with CDGs. That's absolutely exactly, right. exactly. So it has gauge transformation only if you have CDGs. If you uh, if you destroy them, you destroy everything. So these are two different cases, as you know. 
theory with gauge symmetry and theory without gauge symmetry are two different theories. Having a gauge symmetry is a piece of the definition of the theory. So, let me rewrite it this way. And then <clears throat> I can rewrite the equation of almost holomorphicity in the following form. on the loop space. So now I have a real coordinate. And maybe with I or with minus I. actually on the double loop space. So it is a standard thing. I interpret X of Z1, Z1 bar, Z2, Z2 bar as X on sig of sigma 1, sigma 2, that depends on T1, T2, okay? So I have a double loop space and I have uh, double time trajectories there. And this is almost holomorphicity. So these turn out to be particular case of the toy model on the double loop space. Okay, and then you may ask a question. When do these vector fields commute? Okay. So clearly you'll have the structure of the following type. And surely it could be only compatibility or integrability of complex structure. Ability. Of almost complex structure. I guess uh, I'm, I'm, you probably don't need little i in these equations, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yes. So thank you. Okay. So let us make a break. Because there is a rule. So as Nikolai Mnev told me, somebody has to hold me. Okay? And we need to have breaks. So it's, so it's a place 
where we can make a uh, five minute break.
Я посмотрю на финале. Лекция. Окей. So let us continue. So maybe there will be some questions before I go further. Yeah, so I, I was a bit uh, puzzled by, so yeah, this equation, uh, it's not, so there's a Kadeira Spencer equation which has like high order terms. But this is written in terms of J, not in terms of um, the time differential. So there are no higher order terms, right? Yes. Okay. This is written purely in terms of uh, real, uh, real data. Mm -hmm. So you see everything looks consistent. And uh, so before we thought of T1 and T2 is kind of like two times theory. Yes. Uh, and now we want to have this two times theory, but also promote target space to two loops. Yes. And uh, I mean, it's, it's not immediately obvious that commutate, commutativity of these two vector fields will give integrability. I'm just trying to check it. It's like, uh, so like the, the, uh, you, you can see what is the structure that you could potentially have. So uh, definitely you will have derivative of uh, J. Okay. Yeah. With respect to X. So J D D J. Well, what else could it be but uh, integrability? Well, uh... and if complex structure structure is integrable, you can just write it down in complex coordinates, and then integrability is obvious. So let us put it this way. Let us discuss this issue. So this, so written this in this way, it is not clear when this system is integrable. However, if you have holomorphic coordinates, then this big J becomes small letter I. And then integrability and then uh, two-time evolution is uh, integrable. Sure, but that's what we want to show. We want to show that. So, if, so one way it goes. So if uh, complex structure is integrable, then the system works. So what would be an abstraction? Integrability. Well, if, okay, I would just, besides just having JDJ, we, uh, first of all, it comes not just JDJ, but, but it's dressed by derivatives of X on the two sides. So you see derivatives of, C, of, of a sigma commute, of course. But you see, I appreciate your question because uh, you see, I am doing with this for a long time and uh, I don't know uh, what looks trivial and what looks non-trivial. 
So I thought it was obvious, but uh, of course, uh, there is a computation that can be done. Okay, so let me go further a bit. Okay? Sure. So it's good that it does not look so trivial. Okay? I mean, yeah, it just appears like it's some combined condition on J and X, but I, mean, I, I want to do computation and see, see myself. Yeah. Okay, so let us let us proceed a bit further to see some other phenomena here. Okay, so now I would like to consider targets. Like CP1. So I'll explain what's going on uh, for CP1, but uh, I'll show that it could be generalized for an arbitrary toric target. So I'd like to do what I'd like to do. I'd like to go to free fields. And uh, I will start with the dim complex dimensional of sigma equal to one. Let me write down the, what I called AIB idea. If we map sigma to toric variety X, then you can consider X minus D one minus D N. C star to the power K, okay? CP1 minus zero minus infinity is C star, okay? So here is D1, D2, Dn. And here is the map phi. And this is Phi of sigma.
So we have here points of intersection. Let me call these points omega one. These points omega two. And these points omega n. So they have labels, say one, two, in this case, one, two, one, two. So here I have my sigma. And here I have point. Omega one one, omega one two, omega two one, omega two two, omega n one, omega n two. So sigma minus collection of omega points is mapped to C star to the power M. Okay. So it's trivial, but you you could just imagine it. But that if you cut out divisors, you get C star. So if you cut out pre images, it goes there. And this thing has nice linear structure. So X itself does not have linear structure. However, if we cut out compactifica compactification divisors, we do have linear structure. And therefore, we can write down, we can understand holomorphic maps of sigma to X as a max maps of sigma minus these omega points to C star to the power M, that would also be holomorphic plus some singularities at, ma at uh, these omega points. By linear structure here, you mean what exactly? It's not a vector space. So. Yeah. So C star, C star is what? Is this? It has okay. angular coordinate phi. Okay, so logarithm of C star has a linear structure. What? Logarithm of C star has a linear structure. Yes. So okay. So on, uh, in other terms, on C star, you. You can define logarithm, okay. Ah, okay, so a quotient of vector space. Mm -hmm. So holomorphicity equation look like d bar r plus i phi 
Hey. And the action is like this. At the moment, nothing uh, interesting happened. What I'd like to do, I'd like to regroup this um, as follows. P capital A, D5 with the I in front plus P capital A star DR. So P capital <clears throat> is made out of pi and pi bar. And star just distinguishes differences here. So maybe the proper way to write it is to put i here in front. Uh, no, in, in, let, let us put it this way. So one, so pi i is just combination of these two. So this is. One zero differential. And this is, of course, zero one differential. And I combine them into P capital. Mm, maybe star should be in the other term, no? It doesn't matter when where it star. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So this looks like this gauge fixed abelian BFT, right? Yes. Or without ghosts. I see. And of course, of course, there are fermions here. So here I should put fermions. And of course I have to put them here. Now, now it's interesting. How can I enforce proper singularities at omega points? Because I have to enforce it. So I'll write it in blue because it's about blue points. To make singularities at omega points, I will do the following. I will consider non-local, non-local. Operators 
as follows. No. So P A N A alpha That's it. So I need to explain what does this mean? So alpha stands for the compactification divisor. This compactification divisor corresponds to an integer vector n. For CP1, 0, it is a vector minus 1. Infinity, it is a plus 1. And lattice is one dimensional. For CP2, we have three divisors. And we will get something like one zero, zero one, minus one, minus one. Can I, I um, sorry, in the integral, What's uh, what's the notation there? There's omega alpha in in above. Yes. The... So we call it v omega alpha. Depend that depends on m alpha. So divisor with the index alpha is characterized by an integer vector m. It stands at point omega. And here I have an integral from some auxiliary point u. The final answer would be independent of this u. So this capital P is a one form. So we can integrate. So you, uh, you integrate from u to omega l. Huh? Yes. Omega. So, well, so, omega. so this is something non-local. Mm -hmm. But also the results depends on the on the on the path, uh, unless you are on the equations of motion. Mm -hmm. But I am on the equation of motion. I am going, of course. I'm going to insert this V inside the correlator. So you don't, you don't worry about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, But just in one, uh, let me show that it go, that it does what it should do. Because in these coordinates, holomorphic maps are logs. And this is just to reproduce cuts of logs. Sorry, what? The holomorphic maps are what? So what are holomorphic maps? In standard coordinates, holomorphic um, maps are something like... Logs, logs. Ah, logs? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. So this is pre-image of zero. So this is pre-image of infinity. So let us consider a typical holomorphic map. So it's standard coordinates. Now I take log coordinates. So with low coordinates, you see phi's should have cups, okay? And this is basically where the cups should happen. So this line. I'm sorry. <clears throat> On, uh, you said before that alpha is compactification divisor, but, but, it's not a devi but it's not a divisor, right? It's a point. Well, on the target CP1, it's it's a divisor on the oh, source. Oh, we consider CP1 only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Wait, on the CP1? I thought we were doing general tor toric. So, so this formula for CP1. Sure, but this statement, the definition of V. The definition of V is V for general. For general. Mm. Okay. So and the equations of motion here were just what that 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 phi is constant and r is constant. No holomorphic, right? Uh, or uh, of course holomorphicity. Ah, holomorphic. Oh, okay. So. And here you see that uh, the holomorphicity. However, phi should have jumps on this line. Okay. So. Uh, Back to the so this path that connects U and omega, can it wind? No, around C. Star Sorry, X? this path that connects U and omega, can it wind? Yes, but it's uh, you see typically typically what 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 will happen? The number of these V's for answer to be non-zero should be such the sum of momenta should. Uh, Go to zero. So mm -hmm. this u, uh, so this u drops out. U drops out. Can you give an example? Of course. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's what you call log. Mm -hmm. Holomorphic function that has uh, jumps and phi here. So it's a cut from an arbitrary point to one fixed point and then to the other fixed point, but then you can yes, just remove it. Yes, can uh, move these cuts. Yeah, you, yeah, you can merge them. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Now, what I can do now I can make, finally, I'm ready to make a mirror transformation. Sorry, I'm, I'm confused. What, what was, what's the statement uh, right now? Statement or... is that uh, in presence of such Vs, X looks like this. X is what, a solution? Yes. So we will put he here some Vs. Mm -hmm. So when we put Vs, they're a linear in P. Okay? 
So it's a delta function on some map. So the statement is a delta function on exactly this map. They are not, they're not in the exponential or no? V contain P. Mm -hmm. So when we put here some V, not in the exponential. Mm -hmm. When we put here some V, this P goes to exponential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll erase this picture. So in presence of a few Vs with total momentum equal to zero, you get what? A solution like this with some logs. Yes. And here, this is the integral of sigma. And this is the integral from u to omega alpha. So, uh -huh. so, so these are terms that contain p. Everything in the exponential is linear in p. Mm -hmm. So it's a condition to have a holomorphic map that has a jump on this line. So it's it's like can I think of it as a correlator of several v's and one one phi? You don't need to have phi. Here we can have so. It's good to have equations with the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So some v's and one x or mm -hmm. x. Yes. yes. Equals to the same type of v's. And here we put x whole. Of Z. Mm -hmm. So if you put here uh, observable field X of Z, we get this. Okay. Yeah. And parameters of this hole are in positions of these Vs. Mm -hmm. So now I do the last thing. So is this what you were calling uh, uh, the holomorphic? Yes, these V's were called holomorphisms. Because they are kind of vortex that are related to holomorphic maps. It sounds like a spell from Harry Potter now. What? Harry Potter. It sounds like a spell from Harry Potter. So now we will do the last thing. Mm. So having all this, I would try to do fine integral. Sorry, I, I um, hold on a second. Um, um, you changed some rules along the way, right? Wait, something... well, where do I, did I change some rules? Mm. You, you, you... I to change rules. I try not to change rules. Uh, are you worried about non-local observable? Or... No. I, th I thought, was, like, at some point you looked at... You wanted to study holomorphic maps and then you... Yes, and so I still want to study holomorphic maps on the complement of these things. Yeah, so uh, you, I thought, so you intersected with divisors, removed uh, divisors, and so study I'm is on the complement. Holomorphic map outside. Yeah. But and there then, are then... holomorphic maps outside these omegas. I need to I need to pick up a specific one. Why? What do you mean specific one? Suppose just imagine that I want to pick up a specific one. So we somehow want 
Yeah, a map like not just to C star, but the one that extends to C CP one, right? Or yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We 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 want to have maps that extend to this uh, compactification. Yeah. So at some point you said that you want to introduce some singularity at omegas and. Yes. So this thing actually uh, in, introduced singularities in omegas. Yeah. Yeah. You see, this solution is not holomorphic at omegas, right? Uh, yeah. So what kind of singularities we want in general? So in in this case, in toric case, it's a log singularity. We want X A to go as log Z minus W. Of course, with the vector and A. X. Okay. X is uh, Z plus. I guess it's more more clear before you took the log than than it's. I mean, it's I, it either has a pole of of some order or a zero of some order, and this order yes. is your n. So, so in uh, in these coordinates, it's pole all uh, or zero. But in general, in general, if you have general toric variety. You should write things in R plus I phi coordinates. Um, so why, why? Why do I want this? Mm -hmm. Because it's exactly what corresponds to to compactification. I allow this mm -hmm. singularity. Mm. And there's what? Uh, sorry, there's that's Because having exactly this singularity would put me on the compactification divisor. Um, but by the way, what, what what is the compactification divisor in some kind of higher dimension case, like say CP2? So is it the highest co-dimension? Well, uh, compactification divisor is of course of co-dimension one. Co-dimension one, okay. No. Mm -hmm. For say for the case of CP two or for CP two, okay. Mm -hmm. So let us study CP two. Mm -hmm. So we need to write down maps, all right? So CP two has coordinates x zero x one and x two okay so x i of z is uh, polynomial yes Right, and uh, I can uh, even write it this polynomial as z minus what I can decompose it into numbers. So, you're looking at maps from CP1 to CP2, and you're saying that okay, the only things that we have are polynomials, okay, yeah, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
and uh, at some points xi goes to zero. It goes to zero exactly at this point. Exactly. It goes to zero at points omega one, omega two, etc. Mm -hmm. So it happens, say, with x1 and x2. However, there is also x0. We know how CP2 is built in. We need to add the zeros of x1, zeros of x2, and the common infinity. So let me put here, for simplicity, mm -hmm. x1 and 2. Mm -hmm. And there is also x0 of z. OK? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you can see what are these things. So uh, there is some, some place where x1 goes to 0, where x2 goes to 0, and uh, another place is where uh, x1, uh, when, where x0 goes to 0. So So when x0 goes to 0, x1 and x2 have not zeros but poles, right? Well, sorry, they don't, but uh, I guess, what do you mean they become poles? So, okay, so of course when... they don't. x1, x2, and, and x0. Yes. I mean, nothing yeah. becomes poles, but uh, but some induced kind of coordinates. That I mean. Yes. So, uh, so when I'm when I'm talking about coordinates, mm -hmm. I take these coordinates from x one and x two, of course. Mm -hmm. You see, I need to understand how these three homogeneous coordinates are going yes. into C star square coordinates. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So coordinates on C star square are x1 over x0 and x2 over x0. Mm -hmm. So in C star square coordinates, 0 over x1 is one thing. Here I have log. 0 over x2, I also have log. And 0 of x0 are common poles, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it means that I have minus log singularity. I have minus here in both. Mm -hmm. so that's why I have this one for zeros of x1. This one for zeros of x2. And this one, these are zeros of x0. However, here I see them as common pools of x1 and x2. I, sorry. I, I don't even know what to ask. I, I'm, I'm completely lost in what you're saying. You see, I'm trying, I'm trying to write down the poles of of toric coordinates. So Andre is describing CP2 as uh, 
C star squared, I, I join three additional strata, the compactification strata. And this C star squared corresponds to this standard chart where you divide x1 and x2 by x0. Yeah, but this standard chart is C squared, not C star squared. So I'm like, no, right. no. Um, it's, it, it depends on what you call standard chart. Mm -hmm. So, so yes. So, but I would like to have C star square. Okay, so you, uh, okay, logarithmic coordinates again. Mm -hmm. Yes, log in logarithmic coordinates, of course. Mm -hmm. So I need to add zero of x1, zeros of x2, And here I have these logs with plus one. Mm -hmm. And I also have to add in zeros of x zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. So zeros of x zero here are poles. Yeah. Are common poles of x one and x two. Mm -hmm. So if you have zero of x zero, it means that these coordinates have poles simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And that's why at z zeros of x zeros correspond to the same structure with the vector minus one, minus one. Because the difference here, the difference between zero and pole is just the sign that you have here. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, so, so this vector that you write in two component vector, uh, one, zero, zero, so what is that? That's this NA. Uh, so this, is, this is the structure of singularity. And A is written in this, co in this uh, coordinates, uh, uh, x1 over log of x1 over x0 and log x2 over x0. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I have. So let me say what can I say about R one minus I phi one. It goes like this at zero. Okay. okay. Of x one. It has no singularity at zero of, of x2. Mm -hmm. And it goes with the minus at zero of, of x0. Mm -hmm. And this is the standard toric geometry. So maybe I, I should write it in the following way. I will write the table. Zero means regular. Okay. Okay. So in your original problem, um, okay, I see. So in your original problem, this n a alpha were some concrete numbers, not just arbitrary. Of course. So they they were concrete numbers that determined your target space. Exactly. As a toric manifold. Yes, here, here I have three ends. 
and so, one zero. And, and so the trick was to describe this uh, sigma model counting holomorphic maps as a sigma model with C star to the K target and such additional assertions with specific values of N A alpha. Is that the case? Of course. Okay. okay. Yeah. But by the way, this n can be not just one zero, it could be like, I don't know, seven zero, right? So if you have, uh, so the question is what, uh, so if you have co coincident poles. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. But it cannot be negative two, negative three, it can be only negative two, negative two. So, but, but it cannot be two negative, yes. I mean, if it if it is corresponds to zero, yeah, okay, it's clear. Mm -hmm. So this thing to respond holomorphic map in general position. Mm -hmm. Now let me make another trick. And this trick is called T-duality. Hmm. So T-duality is well-defined if you have uh, a system like this. You integrate out phi. And you say that P becomes D of Y dual. So this Y is a coordinate on the dual circle. I do it here and if I have e to the i phi a, it would become vortex. So sometimes I can have such, uh, such uh, observables. They would become vortices. So yeah, I, I don't quite know what what are you saying here. What does it all mean? What, so before this, is it clear that if I have no phi dependence, I integrate phi out, and I have dp equals to zero, or p is dy. Let me see. Uh, I'm not sure what you, what you meant by dual circle. Uh, are you talking about the circle on the source or, or on the target? So p, oh, of course, on the, everything is on the target. On the target, where's the circle on the target? Target is, is some... So there was a circle of phi. Why, uh, target was some uh, toric manifold. Yes, so it had several circles. Okay. Target was S1 to the power N times okay. some. Okay. Times R to the power N. So we consider one factor or something. So we, so we are dualizing in all this, in all this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this P capital becomes differential of the coordinate of the, of the dual of the dual circle. So to write this down, we we don't have a problem with closed forms versus exact forms. Uh, they have uh, integer jumps. Mm -hmm. I see. You see, this phi has jumps. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this y is um, some sort of a multi-valued object. It's an angle of a of a dual circle. Okay. And. Uh, and uh, I, it could be that, that I could have correlators 
of something that contained what? E to the R plus I phi A. At some point, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. So when I'm dualizing here, mm -hmm. I will have, I'm integrating over phi. Yes. I would have Condition that dPA is delta function of what? Of z minus y. If, would I have this observable? Mm -hmm. So I can say that pi A is still dy. So but, that observable, is, should I think of it as a, as a vertex separator? Yes, yes. Yeah. But i to the i phi a becomes a vertex. Um. But by vertex, I, I meant with a, with a letter e, not with a letter o. Uh, no, I mean, e to the i phi in, in, the, in the free boson theory is a, is a vertex operator. Uh, yes. I guess it's both but vertex here, and vortex. Uh, vortex is O. Not vertex, but vortex. I guess there are different things going on here. Vortex is something uh, uh, where uh, your field has singularity. So what this is probably the solution to the equation that zero dp equals delta function. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so. Okay. I'm it's a, it's a vertex that creates a vortex. Mm -hmm. Yes. So previously, okay, so it's all people who can confuse. Mm -hmm. So vortex uh, as a, what you have in turbulence, this vortex. Yes. What is the best way to call it? No, no, the, 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 that's good. I, I was just I was scared by the word, but okay, I, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So after I do this dualization, I put pi a equals dy, mm -hmm. I cancel this thing out. So action simplifies. Now the holomortex simplifies. Uh -huh. Holomortex becomes local. No integrals anymore. No more integrals, pure exponentials. Mm -hmm. If you had an observable that depended only on R, you just do not need to do anything. However, if you had an observable that depended on phi, you just need to replace vortex whenever you have that observable. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, what was the last statement? I somehow. 
The statement is that if we make this dualization, mm -hmm. that is a rigorous concept, the holomorphic separators become local uh -huh. and pure exponential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bosonic theory becomes second order. Ah, okay. And and the insertions of the original uh, e to the i phi operators they sort of create punctures in in terms of this uh, new variables. Yeah. With some fixed properties of, of fields around them. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If there are any, they would create these punctures. So, if you, in particular, if you'd like to observe, say, uh, Fubini study metric, I forget how to call it. How to write? Well, without H, I think. Yeah. With Y, with Y. With I, I think. Uh, actually, probably with I. I'm not sure. You'll excuse me. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure anymore. Okay, form. Then it is. Yeah, it's with Y. With Y? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. DZ, it was DX, DX bar. Okay. And these coordinates, it was, of course, d phi, d r, and something like e to the 2 r. Mm -hmm. And downstairs, I have one plus e to the 2r, 2r. And this would correspond to, of course, psi, psi bar, e to the 2r, What is psi? Oh. oh, it's differential form. It corresponds to oh. some function uh, of uh, variable here. It's a standard map. Differential form on target goes to function of x and psi. X goes to X, DX goes to Psi. Mm -hmm. I'll write it this way. O Omega. That is a function of X, X bar, Psi, Psi bar. You need to take components of differential form and whenever we see dx, replace it with psi. Mm -hmm. So it's actually not a problem of this notation. It's a stupid way how we are writing differential forms from the very beginning. Sorry. Instead of writing psi's, we call them dx's. For historical reason. Sorry, what, what, what you were explaining? Uh, I was explaining why Fubini stood the differential form. Goes to observable like this. Goes under what? 
I am writing it in this coordinates. Okay. And I want to say that it has no phi dependence. So if I'd like to study correlators of such differential forms, I would see no problems with vortices, etc. So uh, is it true that you're considering an example uh, in which you want to dualize CP1? Y yes. Okay. Mm, okay. I can write it, uh, I can write for me to study for CPN and uh, it's possible to write down similar differential forms on toric manifolds. Um. I, I guess I don't, why was it important for you to mention to make this remark about psi, psi bar? So uh, I just want to show how it looks like. Are they related? To, um, like, is it gonna show up in the action? Or? The action. They are on the action here. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, so, uh, so if I would like to make computation in this theory. I need to see how observables look like. Mm -hmm. So differential form goes like this if it has no phi dependence. Would it have phi dependence? I will need to put some vortices. Ah, you're discussing observables. Okay. Yes. And the action, ah, and the action is just the same as before. No, no. In particular, uh -huh. mm -hmm. since suppose it's CP1, I would like to discuss vector fields, okay? So for vector field, so, so what are vector fields here? Well, let us see vector fields. So in coordinates X, for CP1, in coordinate X, I had vector fields, d over dx, x d over dx, and x squared d over dx, right? This vector field would be, of course, translation. Plus or minus, I don't remember. So these vector fields would correspond to observables, to observable. So before it was observable pair. Now I can see what's going on under dualization. So I don't remember what exactly what exactly happens, but it's a free field theory. You can work it out if you wish. I just want out. to stress that sometimes you have X and X. So, so, sorry, Andre, so what, what are we doing now? So we want to associate observables to vector fields on the target. And of course then... I want to. Sorry? Of course I want to associate observables mm -hmm. also to vector fields on the target. Mm -hmm. Because in the concept of instantonic theory, I had this option. Mm -hmm. So previously, I wrote observables O tilde that were written like V of X P 
É só o jeito do filho vir. Olá? So it was this thing, and here I had something like CJ by I. Because these observables correspond to lambda deformation of the instantonic of the instantonic equation. Mm -hmm. So say for V of X equals to one, this vanishes, I have just P. For V of X equals to X, I have X P plus something like psi pi. And then, since x is r plus e to the i phi, under dualization, I am getting here a vortex. So these vector fields become complicated. So when you make this dualization, the holomorphisms become local and vector fields become complicated. So, uh, sorry, I missed. What, what becomes a vortex under ah, X. X itself? Because X was R times was sorry. So it would contain vortex. Uh, it, it is, uh, sorry, it, it is vortex. It is just vortex before dualization, no? Or when you do dualization, okay, uh, th this was a vertex. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. So it becomes singularity of the dual variable y. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I called vortex a place where dual variable y is not defined. So you see, you have two variables. Phi and later one Y. In the standard uh, log, in the standard rules of T duality, whenever you have uh, if one thing is local, another is non-local. But let me postpone this discussion mm -hmm. because now I want to make the final hit. So after I explain this, I want to write down the final picture. And final picture is, suppose we have a map from the surface to the toric X. T 
still I would like to have here compactification divisor. D1, D2, etc. Now the image of a surface. intersects these divisors by curves. These are curves. So on the surface S, I have these curves. Inverse image of D1 and inverse image of Dn. Okay. And I can write down the same thing. It's not phi pull, phi pullback, it's phi inverse, right? What? It's not phi pullback, it's phi inverse, right? Phi, phi inverse of D1. Right, 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 good. Yes. No, no. So what's no. interesting is that these things are strings. So once again, I have a quadratic theory with some, with more fermions, uh, gauge fixing, quadratic theory, together with strings. Uh, so, but this is curves. Oh, sorry, no, no, that's okay. Yes, so, so these curves, are strings. And what I know about these strings is that they are holomorphically embedded in S, right? And uh, when I would like to integrate our holomorphic maps, it would correspond to integration of positions of strings in the surface. And this is uh, a conjectural statement that Holomorphic maps of surface into toric variety corresponds to a quadratic theory on the surface that contains strings. And these are not arbitrary strings, but uh, once again, strings of type A. because they are holomorphically embedded. Moreover, these strings would carry something like a charge, correspond to the type of the divisor. Hmm. 
So one may speculate that this higher holomorphic maps theory is kind of a string theory. At least it's a theory that has strings. And uh, it, besides strings, it has also local field theory that's quadratic. So once you know embeddings of these strings, what what remains to specify the map? Uh, when, when you know embedding, uh, you need to solve a simple uh, equation. Like, uh, how can you how how are you getting uh, holomorphic map in dimension one? You know the position of points. You need to make log out of this. Here, a similar thing would happen. Mm -hmm. So why, why do you think it's a quadratic theory? Everything is the same. You do everything the same. However, you have a gauge. Uh, you, you have a gauge uh, theory on piece, as we decide, described. You also need to make a gauge fixing here. Gauge fixing. No, of course, because you have this. So write everything as before. But now, this is not one zero differential, but of course, to one differential. Mm -hmm. So it has a gauge symmetry. And then do the same thing. So what I feel interesting is that uh, this theory of holomorphic maps of surfaces looks uh, as a toy model for what we used to call M theory. Namely, you have some uh, field theory and strings of several types that are propagating there. You may ask about D brains or whatever. It may be, let me speculate, that local observables would somehow correspond to D brains, but I don't want to speculate. Local observables where? Because in original theory of holomorphic maps, there were some observables. Oh, you mean the brains for these strings? Okay. Yes. So you see, you at least it's, it's kind of a toy model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we always wanted uh, to have a doable model where you have what? Where you have some a local quantum field theory. So here, this is like a local quantum field theory, where we should have where we have strings. Okay. So here we have strings. We have we have several types of strings. Okay, so here are several types of strings. 
these, these strings should not be wild. They are not wild. They are type A strings. Because they are holomorphically embedded. So in the toy example, uh, there was one comp one comp one complex dimension less. There you would consider uh, like this points, right? Yes. So so these were d minus one brains. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you integrate over position of d minus one brains you change the action. So that's what happens here. You change the action. Okay. You just put this uh, vertex operators uh, to the action. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's called these things. There is an explicit formula. And this is called the uh, holy waffle superpotential. Mm -hmm. All right. So he, predicted he, by Givental from the different reasons. You, so, so, so you integrated over positions of omega alphas. That's what you did. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. So here you have, so here the uh, a theory is deformed, and this is uh, basically B model. So we have a free theory deformed by superpotential. But this was in complex dimension one. Because I had no strings, I just had D minus one brain. I'm sorry for this terminology, but it's not, it's not my fault uh, people introduced it. If you go higher, you start having strings. If Wait, you go uh, even higher, you have something even more complicated. Sorry, I, I, I'm confused. In that, that was exam. There was a toy example, and but here you have this Y, which is something already from the world of non-toy example. So what do you mean? In, in the toy, in the toy example, we didn't have any Y A. Oh, this why A was after dualization. Right. Uh... So before dualization, I had also strings, but uh, I had non-local representation for them. They were just integrals or points. I had this formula. Ah. Before dualization, the formula was like this. After dualization, Mm -hmm. so, so, so the toy example was about I uh, um, was about string. So, once again, uh, no, I'm just the, the world sheet. And, uh, I'm just trying no, to yes, yes, the, 
So before, before I went to higher dimensions of the source, I, I, I had a theory of holomorphic maps of sigma into toric variety. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the content of your IBAT paper. Yes. Right. And now you can now here we're talking about the generalizations to and and I was talking about dualizations and etc. Yeah. Now I want to go further. By the way, can, can I ask him also something? So I, that paper, I, I so it fixes the issue in Hori Vafa, right? That that you kind of you remove these fibers that. Uh, the shrinking fibers, so the dualization becomes possible. Yes. Is that right? Yes. I, I, we removed the shrinking fibers. We removed it, uh, and uh, we replaced them by uh, corresponding operators. Mm -hmm. But then, then you get this theory with weird signature or something. Ah, I remember, yes. I Yes, yeah. we get we get a theory like this. However, if you make computations, you will get exactly what you get in the A model. And then you may ask, this looks a Lorentzian signature, okay? Mm -hmm. However, this Lorentzian signature is actually a uh, analytically continu continued uh, Euclidean signature. Mm -hmm. And when you compute uh, some observables, you can make analytic continuation. That's why we call it AIB. So we started with A model. Mm -hmm. We call this model that is exactly equivalent to A model because it's just standard field uh, transformation. We call this model I. Mm -hmm. And B is the model where we have everything the same, but uh, different signatures here. Mm -hmm. So many results do not depend on the signature. So that's actually, this is I model, if you wish. If you analytically continue, you will get what people call B model. Mm -hmm. So, but, but it's another issue. It's about how I model is related to B model. Mm -hmm. I am going to discuss it in the course. Today, I want to discuss this phenomenon. That higher uh, holomorphic map theory is a field theory with different strains inside and may be considered as a toy model for other models that we have in our life. And the advantage of this model is that it is doable. So we, we can study it, we know everything about it. So it's a constructive model where we have uh, fields and strings, okay? So you you so this model of holomorphic uh, surfaces no holomorphic curves so it's kind of like you replace you kind of get Grom of Witten on the source manifold yes so higher Grom of Witten to the target is a uh, Grom of Witten string theory on the source something like that. So, what people wanted to understand, of course, is the reverse way. 
we have theory with the strings, okay? We want to know how to sum up all the strings to get some global theory of something. So it is a, a step towards understanding the question, what is the string theory? In particular, we know that in 11 dimensional uh, supergravity, we definitely have soft fields like gravitino, graviton, uh, tensor field. Okay, and we also have membranes. We have all package, okay? And we would like to understand this package as something else. We are not satisfied with the description with the package. So here is another example where we have a similar package. Local field theory and some extended objects tied together in a specific way. If they are tied together in a specific way, all together, it's a nice theory of holomorphic maps from S into toric manifold. So it is a step towards understanding uh, M theory. Of course, as a toy model. So here, if you do not include all strings, you will get nonsense. But if you include all strings, you get a nice theory. Andre, uh, and, and sorry, an organizational question. Yes, I think I think it's enough for today. Ah. <laughs> So we started at, okay, so most people are from United States. So we started at two. Now mm -hmm. it's 4.43, right? Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, but uh, I still I want to thank uh, you for holding me on a button, Pasha, as your father says. <laughs> right. Uh, no, uh, sorry. Um, sorry for being the time, time policeman. Um, so, 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 just one, one question. So, I just I, since I out of uh, ignorance. So, uh, in two dimensional models, so including this Hori Waffle superpotential, so what does it do? So, why, why should we or should we not do that? Include this term here or in two dimensions? No, in two dimensions. In two dimensions. In two dimensions. Uh... In two real dimensions or in two complex yeah, two, two real, two real, one complex. In two real dimensions, we do include it. We lift it to the action and we see the theory in the deformed complex structure. So superpotential ah. is the deformation of the complex structure in Witten, Gerasimov, Baranikov, Kansevich sense. But then there should be a parameter of the deformation somewhere. Of course. Coefficient in front of the superpotential. Oh, but where, where's the coefficient? Ah, you see, you see when I, you see when I said that, you see when we have this uh, number of zeros and poles. Mm -hmm. Of course, the number of zeros in, in poles is a topological charge. Okay, but so I thought that, that if there should be a, like a Beltrami differential or something if we're talking about a deformation. It's not Beltrami; it's superpotential. Uh -huh. Beltrami differential is the classical deformation of complex structure. Okay. And the proper deformation of a complex structure mm -hmm. are uh, polyvector fields. Sure, sure. Okay. In the zero one fold. And Beltrami deformation uh, differential is a vector field that takes okay. value in the zero one fold. Okay. However, there is the simpler thing, that is a function 
It's a rather special kind of deformation, really. It's yes. In mm -hmm. this model, it's a special kind of deformation. Mm -hmm. I see. And this is doable. But why uh, are you talking about deformation? Uh, um, it's, it's like when, it's... I, when I have the super potential. Of course, it's a deformation. But because... I mean, but it's generated by instantons, right? So it's yeah, like it's yeah. just there. Yes, but uh, I can have a city angle. I can mm -hmm. put the city angle to inf to infinity or i infinity, and I can kill it. Ah, okay. So typically, what I should keep here is the Q in mm -hmm. front. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I have more complicated toric variety, I should have not only one Q, but several Q. So Q is a strength of deformation or, or theta angle? Uh, or what here, here Q is a topological charge. <laughs> and, and it comes as a strength of deformation, of course. OK. So it would be no instantons. No instantons, just forget about it. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. you'll have uh, constant maps. One instanton is the term where we have only one Q. I see. Q to the mm -hmm. first power, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. Non-interesting thing, mm -hmm. non-perturbative summing of instanton means that Q is not formal, but actually equals to one. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. In this way, you actually sum up instantons, allowing this Q to be non-infinitesimal. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, so uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, our paper, uh, with the Frankel AIB was about summing up instantons. Mm -hmm. And they actually sum up into this mirror superpotential. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be very desirable to make similar things in uh, real dimension four for gauge theory. Because uh, it would be interesting how to sum up instantons in the, into the Grom of Witten curve in a rigorous way. Not by saying that, look, due to this consideration and that consideration, they have to sum up. Mm -hmm. Just to sum up them like one, two, three, four, five. So here we summed up them term by term. Mm -hmm. If you expand here, you can get uh, exactly integrals of the modular space of instantons. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to see something as, a, as explicit in uh, four dimensional gauge theories, but uh, I don't know how to do it. In, in the, then would you also dualize it? You see, in the gauge theory, I don't know the proper uh, language. Because uh, this became possible because the instanton decoupled into quarks. And quarks were pre-images of uh, compactification devices. If the instanton has something like a size, I don't know what would it mean to integrate over the, these collective modes, etc. Mm -hmm. In the toric varieties, instantons is a collection of positions, and it was possible to sum it up. Mm -hmm. Back to the question from the middle of the lecture. Yes. If you compute those vector fields, you actually get uh, the, the the vector fields and the double loop spaces. So you get not just non hoist tensor, but this tensor contracted with dx over the sigma one, dx over the sigma two. Yes. <clears throat> so I meant 
So uh, if if the tensor vanishes, then of course this is zero. But if you consider the most general situation, uh, it's. Um, can you argue that you see a uh, uh, double loop means that the x over the sigma one, the x over the sigma two, could be anything, because you allow all loops. But can you like uh, get a restriction on possible loops? So I, I, I don't know what would it mean, but uh, probably one can play with it. I just don't know. Moreover, there is another thing that I don't really know and that I want to know. In the case of uh, two dimensional Young Mills theory, Okay. Once again. Now I write it A, Lagrange multiplier. I know that I can generalize it to AA phi. So here is something that happens on the space of Lagrange multipliers. You know, this is a gauge interaction. I don't know how to interpret it in terms of Cizikis. What does it mean? I am very interested in it. I'd like to understand what, what would it mean not just to have this linear dependence on A's, as a gauge, as a abelian gauge theory symmetry, I'd like to see what the, what would it mean to have this non-abelian gauge symmetry. Okay, I understand that this is not delta function anymore because a because there is quadratic dependence on a. I understand this. However, I understand that I can expand in coupling. So So I have this geometrical problem problem. I don't know what it is. Well, that's uh, well, I mean that's uh, that's a Poisson sigma model into the dual of the Lie algebra and so of the course. geometric. Of, so... of course, I know it from this point of view. I don't know it from the point of view of equations on phi. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is somehow the issue about dualization. Yeah, so I, we know I, how to dualize a d phi system. Either we consider a as a Lagrange multiplier, or we consider phi as a Lagrange multiplier. Mm -hmm. We know this, but uh, I understand this. How can I make higher terms than phi? And still it works. However, I should be able to make higher terms in A. And how these two things are related, I don't quite understand. Well, I, I, don't, I don't really understand the question, though. What so, we making? Once again, consider this model 
AD5, whatever. You can have two dual points of view on this module. One point of view is A is Lagrange multiplier phi constant map. There are the dual point of view. Phi is Lagrange multiplier. A is a flat connection. That's, yeah, that's kind of the usual, I guess. That's the usual. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to deform this. I actually want to deform this, and uh, I can deform it this way. Then A would be Lagrange multiplier, phi would be gradient trajectories. Okay. Now I want to understand the dual thing. So if I are gradient trajectories, A has an interesting modification in gauge transformation. This I know. So A transforms linearly, but uh, in a way that depends on phi. Okay. Now I have this deformation. I want to see the complete picture. And uh, I don't know how to interpret it. Yeah, so that's where I don't, uh, th that's where I don't understand the question. Like, so you have this deformation, and what? So I, so I, you see, I have the for, okay. You still have picture that A is a flat connection, for example, and phi is Lagrange multiplier. Well, in in that picture, you cannot you cannot include v of phi. You can you have problem including one of the terms in both pictures. Sure, uh, I mean, oh, you want to have both, or just just one is enough. Uh, at least, so at least I'd like to understand what is going on. So, so I understand what this means, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and they, would it be okay if I appoint if I make your host because I I apologize I, I need to okay so, so to no, no, let's finish okay no I'm sorry I don't want to sort of that's no, no. a very interesting question but uh, I'm sorry I just yeah no no uh, Pasha la, 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 okay uh, you know uh, when you have a soap opera you should always stop at some interesting moment <laughs> indeed so Pasha please. Um, do not make me a co uh, host. Uh, finish the make, recording. I can make you a full host, not a co-host. I can make you the proper, the full host. No, no, no. La, 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 let us. After all, it's a bit late in Moscow. It's like yes, yes. Should be a host. Mm -hmm. all, all right then. So I'm stopping the recording. Um,